we need plasterboard so what we'll do is we'll just make a copy of this down to the other side oops just make sure the architect doesn't see that and um, push pull this down same thing again So again, it's probably early days, you know, if we can tag this information to three floors in one go and just say zap, that would be great. Okay, now the top here, I'm just going to use a standard uh, rafter, so there's different types. So, you know, we can either put batten purlins or roof rafters in, just accept on that. So Go Chun Yu himself has, you know, sent me his settings for this one. Um, we can build a fascia, uh, you know, more could be added in here. Now what I'll do is I will copy the surface um, and just click outside. Don't know why this appears up here in the moment, I'll just delete it. I think it's an idea for more stories to go on top of this building. Um, and then we'll paste them and just copy up. So we're just going to put a simple roof on here. 30 degrees and overhang, let's go for 750. And let's go in here and just put some battens and uh, rafters problems on that roof. So as I'm working my way, I'm just trying to paint an idea of, you know, we can add all that information swiftly. Um, sometimes to edit is a different story, but uh, maybe that's something that uh, can be looked at. I'm just going to offset the soffit here and just confer it to the wall and then just push pull down just to create a little detail. Let's get rid of this piece of the top there. So we now want to start putting some openings in. We're going to put some detail in on the top, just going to offset this face by 350. Both sides. And I'm going to push to the sides, 600. That way. And then let's offset this 200 because there's going to be movers on this, um, this wall face. So we can select the surface and then we can go to the louver tool. Again, you know, grease away, different louvers, even blinds for the windows, we can add in there. Some deletions, create the louver. Same on the other side. Again, the sentence can be saved out. Let's start working downstairs. Go for let's go for 350 and then a double offset here. Let's add in some paneling onto that face. So I have like a panel division tool. Let's go for six rows and six columns. Click the face. Same thing again. Let's go downstairs, let's add in some openings here, so I'm just going to hide the rest of the geometry. Very, very simple tools, you know, um, we don't do some, uh, you know, really complex uh, aperture openings and frames, but it gets you started. So we've got a set the size there of 2400 by 2100. We can position where that goes along the wall. Sometimes we have to go back in here, so it's something that uh, you know goes looking at at the moment where you may have to go in and just click on that tool again. Next to it, you know, the repeat tool would be fantastic. <coughs> this button clicks is always uh, you know, a good thought of mine. Okay, so we want to build a stair up to this well. Okay, so we've got quite a powerful stair tool. Go for stair 9. Just 
down to the staircase and then just move this out. I've got to the side there. Just put some openings in the wall here. It's going to keep us very simple. I'm going to just change the size there. So opening width will go from 2 400 back into 400 high. So it's changing as we click picture updates there just to make sure that you put in the right value. And the same on the other side. So you may have, uh, you know, users that have used other software that they're used to grabbing objects and dropping them in. So this is becoming a very, you know, dynamic way to build up a model. Um, just trying to emphasize the time factor. Um, some people will muscle away and try and create this model. Um, struggle, build on it correctly. Um, to this day, I'm not too sure that any of the developers here that look at the analysis tools, whether you can take this model in and actually generate information from it would be really good you know, to really streamline that process. Um, I'm just going to go down here now and just fill in I'll just trace right across here. And just get rid of that. So finally I'll just put in some final openings. Very simple panels. Please have that with people asking man, please it's like <laughs> back and forward. But uh uh, let's put some grooves on the wall. So we've got some horizontal grooving. Certain sizes here. Create grooves. One edge up. That looks quite nice. Right the back. I mean, when we work with these different levels, we can take a, a you know, an educated guess to say, let's explode that down. So we could right click explode. And then we could erase this out to make this one face. So if we've got any patterns on that wall, we can actually select those patterns and then maybe even start to put some cladded profile in there. Final result, adding on a little bit more detail. It's not much different from what we did, you know, just to get the things at more. So that took minutes. Recognize the color? Way! <laughs> So that's the architectural side um, of the Faisal Mundur Pro. Now, it's 48 US dollars. So, you know, this final one here is, wouldn't it be great to be able to analyze 3D model shadows from your SketchUp model? Let's have a look at the shadow analysis process. You have the SketchUp model, which is geo-referenced. You may initially add some SketchUp shadows to get an idea of the shadow impact on the building. 
Then we can use the shadow trace option which traces shadows from certain periods in the day. In this case it's 8 till 4 in the afternoon, the four different intervals. So that imprints as groups on the plan. Then we can actually click a point to define the point of shadow duration at that click point. And it tells us there, for example, from 8 o'clock till 8.25, um, there was 26 minutes of shadow during that day. There is an option for a sky exposure ratio dome, which um, will allow you to see the percentage of sky exposure at that point, or whatever is exposed or obscured from the, the dome will be the building itself. And then we've got the solid shadow, which is quite useful to see a 3D um, shadow uh, cast model from the building. So, let's pick our building. And let's place this build, building where we are at the moment. Okay, so we have it here. I'm just going to pull the tool down. So this uh, build in sketch or build is already geo-referenced. So you know, if we click on the settings here, uh, we can tell it to calculate summertime or winter time from 8 o'clock in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. Intervals, 4 hours. And we can export this out to a CSV file, which can be used in conjunction with the sketch of model to prove the effect. So click OK. Then I'll select the SketchUp model and then I will click on the Generate Range of Shadows tool. So there we see it. Okay, so to press the shadow button, drag the time slider, you get the idea now. And then we go for Solid Shadow. If we want to see the point of shadow at a certain point around this model, then we just click and place here and it gives us the view out. But finally the sky exposure, the dome radius, let's say 9 meters, and I just place the sky dome which you here. That's going to show us sky exposure of 91.93%. That's basically it. Okay, so some really neat tools. Um, it takes a little while to get used to the, you know, the motion of applying styles and drawing with them. I think there's um, a lot of uh, opportunity to develop it further, but um, I hope you found that quite interesting. Um, anybody got any questions? I've got the costs up there just to give you an idea. They're very affordable tools. And, um, you know, thanks a lot for watching.